I don't love you anymore. What's up guys, Danny Hype here, with my man, David Ujimari. What's going on? Woo! So yeah, we are 
We're here to talk about the Dende deck profile. Probably just get right into it. But first off, just want to shout out to uh, Colby. He's one of our KTM members. He's the one who uh, brought this to us. It was maybe like a few weeks ago. He showed the list in, in our in our group chat, and I was like, eh, why not? I had nothing else to play. I took it to locals. Like he had his an original build. We, I took it to locals. I played it, and I was like, wow, this is actually pretty fun. It's pretty cool. And then like I made my tweaks, brought it back to chat. And then, you know, David popped in, Richard popped in, and then our chat started popping off, kind of just talking about the deck. And then, so the build you see today is what I took to the uh, celebration event in Montreal. Um, so it's changed a lot. Everyone everyone has a version of this of this deck, um, but I tweaked it to how I liked, and then I, I know David has his own version, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Colby and all that stuff. So, so yeah, this is the deck, you guys. Um, all right, so panning to the... Profile. We got. It, it's a wish leader, so we have seven Dragon Balls. Uh, we're playing two one stars. Uh, original list had one, uh, but we liked it a lot, and uh, I kind of threw out the idea to play play two, kind of like the uh, hand destruction uh, Shenron, and we really liked it since we are utilizing. Uh, four Dragon Radars. So against slower matchups where they don't uh, draw a lot of cards early, it's really nice to go along with the theme of getting rid of their cards. Yeah, when uh, when they had the, I think the original build had the one, and then when David suggested, like I played it with the one, and it seemed fine. But then David suggested that he was playing it with, he was doing it with two, and he liked it. So I, I tried it one day, and I was like, oh man, this definitely feels a lot better with two, just because there's mm -hmm. so many freezes. It can get clunky sometimes, but the the one stars really help that. And like you said, it helps against like some matchups where you can you can literally just like kill their hand like radar to them back and then and then use it again. So the one stars at two. I've seen some other builds out there um, not playing any one stars, and I think that's wrong. But I don't know. This is how this maybe this is how we play the deck. But uh, the one stars were definitely pretty sweet. Um, so for the other extra cards that we have. This is probably like, I don't know, this this card is like, the more I play it, the more I realize that this is like one of the best cards in the game, especially for the, is the uh, four Dragon Raiders. Um, again, I've seen other builds have like two or, or less, but like, this is like the main, it's like not the main card, but it's like one of the, the most important cards in the deck, especially if you if you mill them or you burst them with your Dende. I bursted two one time and it felt like super bad knowing I only had two more in the deck, but being able to get back this next card, which will be our, um, the other extra card is our revival of the emperor so uh, the whole deck is based around this revival here so being able to bring back two of these is broken or bringing back two one stars is broken or even just drawing two like radars it's so versatile you can bring it back like one and one or you know do whatever but it's so versatile that like four dragon raiders is definitely important and then again to the next one the rival of the emperor so which is what the whole concept of the deck is about um so most of the cards in the deck can actually probably be, you know, you can probably interchange them. That's why we have different builds. But the core, these are like kind of the core. But this revival is like the the essence of the deck where we're trying to spam out four drop freezes, especially the promo, the Clan of Terror one. Um, that one, in a good player's hands, is just insane. The knowledge you get by looking at your opponent's hand and knowing what they can and can't do, um, almost mapping of their turns, you can. You can look at their hand and know you've won the game almost in, in some matchups, depending how bad they drew or how good they drew and stuff like that. And it really maps out the next like three, four turns sometimes if you if you gain that knowledge and constantly gaining that knowledge with this, playing this, bringing them back, playing it again, and like I've played like six, seven of those those freezes because they would kill them and I just keep bringing them back and having that constant knowledge will just um, help you, especially if you understand their deck and their meta. Uh, it'll really help you in the game. And then I'll talk about the last extra card here. Which is our um, tie magic? Sorry, um, the tie magic is—it's just the sparking the gate for yellow. It's so in this deck, at least the way I play it, I tap out almost every turn. If I if I if I don't tap out, it's like damn it, I have nothing to play. But I'm constantly tapping out because a lot of the times I have my super combos or or five k combos, or or I have this and I'm at, or I'm at eight life. So when you're tapping out at eight life, you you're not really that scared of of being killed. So being able to tap out um, with uh, with time magic is is pretty sweet. Or, yeah, being being able to have that as backup for defense is pretty sweet. Um, also, there are times where you're against decks where you are at eight life or six life or seven life, and you're you're kind of stuck there um, with leaders that maybe they don't attack you. 
and being able to tie match it yourself down to five to kind of unlock your super combos and stuff like that is a is another strategy you can use. But tie magic is great because it works against you know sh the decks that try to like you know dual attack, triple attack, and, and all that kind of stuff. So tie magic is probably I think the more I play it, is I feel like it's one of the best negates in the game. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The uh, to go on with Danny said the uh, dragon raiders. Um, it's it, it's really key on helping you keep your advantage because. Uh, Dende and like Shenron leaders, they get a lot of advantage early, and then after they uh, they wish or awaken, go to their other side, uh, their advantage starts slowing down a lot more. So, Dragon Radar keeps getting you cards back, keeps getting you value, and then uh, helps you close out games. So four, it was like, it, was, it, it, it this was crazy because most most Shenron decks don't don't play four, but. Uh, uh, this one it was like absolutely necessary and it was really good. So uh, starting off next, um, we have like a little black package. Uh, we have uh, the Dangerous Journey Bulma. Uh, this was for uh, mostly the Geneva matchup. Um, it, it helps alleviate a little bit of the pain of having to burst two every time uh, when you activate on the front side. Uh, it 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 draws you a card as well, but being able to put two back in. Uh, really helps the early game because you, you want to like drag it out to at least turn five so it was really key uh, it was the only reason why this this was in here in the main was because of Janemba yeah <laughs> otherwise it was just like it's literally yeah. mostly for Janemba like there's the off chance you'd use it like if you're not against a Janemba like I would mill like a card that I want back in my deck and I can just like play to put it back in my deck but yeah for most parts it's Janemba if Janemba wasn't here I probably wouldn't bother playing it but yeah yeah, and, and, and like I was saying, it helps get a couple of the key cards back into your deck if you burst them, because some of our counts are really low, and uh, being able to cycle them back in does help uh, on occasion. Um, we have two Shenrons, uh, Figure of Majesty. This one was uh, this was my addition, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we, a lot of us didn't like it in the beginning because it was just kind of dead and clunky, but against the really slower matchups where uh, you just tear, tear their hand apart, and you don't really want to give them extra cards from uh, swinging in and you know lowering their life. Uh, this was really key because it comes in, gives your 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 dudes crit, and uh, lets you kind of continue to bury the game. Because otherwise, you're just giving them cards, you know, extra stuff to maybe come back. And uh, in those in those matchups, it was really really uh, important. And it's not as great, but being able to like if you're if you are against the number, like this whole package was. A for me, at least, when I made the deck, it was originally for the Janemba. Like when he when he when he talked about this, I was like, "Oh, that's pretty good," and I can just cycle this back because you can. Um, it's not as great because you only get one because he draws one, you put back three, and then she draws one. But putting one back into your deck is better than none against Janemba because usually a lot of the games when you're against Janemba, it's like right at the end, and it's like, "Oh my god, I only like two cards left in the deck. I need to yeah. beat him right now," you know. <laughs> and being able to do that kind of stuff is pretty clutch. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, I want to. Okay, so this is a little Namek package that we have. Uh, if you don't know the Dende, when you wish, you get back uh, one yellow Namekian. Or no, it's just, just a Namekian. Yeah, just a Namekian. So, so any Namekian. So every once in a while, you'll like burst an, a Namek, and then uh, you just get free value. So uh, that's why we play the Ancient Wisdom Guru over the, uh, the Beerus. Um, in, in theory, the Beerus can be good in certain situations, but the value that you gain back from getting a guru back when you wish is really, really good. Because um, yeah, it's really rare that we're defending our life from eight, seven, or six yeah. anyways, um, and, we, and we need like the sparking negate. Uh, so having this to be able to pull back is just uh, better than the, uh, than the sparking one, I, I, for me at least. Yeah, and, and, and it being at five too, uh, as long as you take like one damage or something, you can always do a couple of time magics and uh, take those last few to get into that range. Actually, well, one more thing, sorry, um, is the Bulmas are able to put these back in your deck where you can't put back the Sparking Guy, like the, the other one, and that actually is a big deal to, to help. Because it's not like we don't have a lot of things to put back in our deck, but without four of those, it's a lot less, obviously, because to, to, there's some things that we don't want to throw back in the deck. So having the option to throw those uh, super combos back into the deck is pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. The um, and then with a deck, your 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 deck size is going to be really low yeah. a lot of the time. So being able to put three super combos back in and then draw them back consistently yeah. is like crazy. Yeah, it's so good. 
Um, so we have uh, two Wishmaker Dendes. Uh, this was kind of just like Dragon's Ball uh, 8 and 9. Uh, it, it, it was really nice to help um, even out like the whenever you had an even number Dragon Ball because it, it really sucked to activate Dende just to get one ball. So um, two two was two was nice. Um, you saw it enough to you know when when it mattered, and if you didn't, it was okay. You just kind of charged him. Uh, but he, he he came in use in the games that I play with him. Yeah, it's like being having access to basically nine Dragon Balls. Uh, it feels pretty good. Uh, like during the tournament, it was it was weird if I didn't awaken on turn two. I consistently worked on turn uh, awaken on turn two. And then if it took me to tr if I took me three turns to awaken, it'd be like, what the heck? What, the, what just happened? Did I, did I just brick? <laughs> so <laughs> having nine super uh, uh, Dragon Balls was really nice. Yeah, and then the last two are uh, Kami Global Unifier. Uh, this one was kind of a cool interaction with the Clanitaire. Uh Every once in a while, you would be able to catch an opponent with three really key battle cards, and you could Clanitaire the fourth one into play, and then activate the Kami. Uh, and then also it was just really good uh, for decks that go really wide, like uh, veggies. Yeah, like during the team event, I, I had it in my main because of veggies. But during singles, um, obviously we, you don't see veggies as much during singles just because they're not as effective. Um, so I in singles, I, 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 combis isn't the greatest, but that situation that he explained, um, if they ever do get like three key pieces and you can you know force them to play a guy and then just blow up the board, uh, it, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. All right, so the next one is our yellow one drops to help a little with the consistency of the deck. Um, first we have three of the Vicious Lackey Tagamo. So this one just searches your desires because obviously your desires the like one of the key parts of, of the thing. So if you don't actually draw into them, it feels bad. But once you get two, whether they're in your graveyard or in your hand or they're bursted, um, Radar is just so good because it's like you have infinite of these because every time you draw a radar, you have two of these basically. So once, that, once you ever do get two, um, you, these ones eventually become energy for me, but it's like mm -hmm. it helps to, with the consistency. If you don't draw these early and you need to find them, then that helps. Or um, he is another target for a, a later card you'll see. But uh, yeah, it just helps us find our wishes easier. The next one is the Frieza Revenge in Motion. Uh, now this one, you might be able to cut, cut down to two when I was playing it. It turned into energy a lot bec because I was drawing into all my, all my pieces anyways, and it felt like I didn't actually need this as much, but that's not going to happen all the time. I, I think I was just running hot that day. Yeah. But being able to look through your deck... Actually, I'll explain that in a second. Because the next three is because we play a bunch of one-ofs. Um, so these are our, the other three Frieza's. They're not as key as our, our, our Clan of Terror. But basically having three of these means I have almost four ways to find these guys. Whether if I need... They're all situational. Whether I need to kill two guys or have a dual double. Whether I need my Deadly Defender. Or whether I need this guy's... you know snipe a damage or, or lock a guy down if I ever need them at any point in the game and I have this in hand I can just search it throw it into my grave and then just wish them out uh, that's why this is really good but I still might lower it to two again uh, I was drawing really hot that day so I didn't I felt like I didn't need them but I do see its uses still even though after after the tournament um, yeah and, oh sorry so, actually, I I'll explain these ones sorry so the clan of terror obviously it's just it's situational if they ever have two things that you want to kill, but rarely, like most of the time, I would just I could kill their things with my battle cards anyways. Um, the Deadly Defender, I, I actually had started the tournament before the tournament, I had two, and then the last second I, I just switched to one because I was trying to move some pieces around. But Deadly Defender is so good against decks that are um, that need to attack your leader to awake uh, to, to draw a card, especially Harudagarn. I was playing my one friend in the top eight. And he was playing the blue red Hurudar, and something similar to what David won with in uh, Atlantic or in Las Vegas. In turn two, I knew I knew I could do this. So turn two, I normally play the Clan of Terror, but turn two, I just threw him out right away, and he he literally couldn't draw again for the rest of the game because I um I could see like he couldn't kill this because I had more cards, I had more defense, um and then when I eventually saw his hand, I can take out anything that could potentially harm him and thus his leader was never able to swing at my leader again, thus drawing new cards. So then for the rest of the game, I just one start his, uh, I one start his cards out of his hand, or Clan of Terror them out of his hand, killed them, and he was just top deck. Yeah, it's those, like, those leaders are actually pretty... I'm scared to play those leaders now because of <laughs> the situation I put him in. It was actually really powerful. And then this guy, it's another really good situational thing where, let's say you see... This happened to me. I saw a... 
height of mastery in my opponent's hand and it was coming out next turn and I knew I couldn't deal with it on my turn so I just played his height of mastery on board because it only gets as effective if it swaps um, so I played his height of mastery on board and then I had and I, w I had this guy out just to keep him tapped and locked while I just started punching his face because um, this guy's activate main is you can just keep something in rest mode ignoring barrier as well so you can do it to like maybe Gogeta if they don't obviously if they don't have the sparking 10 on whatever but yeah, being able to lock down threats that you know you can't deal with on their following turn is, is really nice with this guy. And I, I've only pulled it off, I think, once against Zoo here. Uh, he just happened to have seven things tapped and at one life, <laughs> and I was able to play this to snipe him. So that was pretty funny. Yeah, this is this is where the deck starts getting like really dynamic because everything is situational and you have to like really adapt to what your opponent's doing. Yeah. And uh, like how you kill the opponent is also uh, you know is is really important because. Because if, if, if you're trying to like go in for triple strike and you really need to do the one damage, he can do it. Or if you, you, know, you really need to get in uh, you know, with crit, he's really good because you can make him a 20k double strike dual attack crit, which is yeah, kind which of absurd. It's pretty hard for people to deal with, especially <laughs> yeah. when they're at, like, at 8 life is which you, when you're normally doing it anyways. Yeah, so and, it's, funny. and it's super hard when you're pressuring their hand too because they don't have a lot of stuff to combo out of. And then it's just like... If they want a combo, it's yeah, it's absolutely disgusting. Uh, Des Jester asks, would personal ambition yellow one drop desire work in this? Uh, I've seen people use it, but I wouldn't say there's really time to use it. One, you already have a lot of extra cards, and that one's just another draw card, which you don't really need to draw, or you could free play it and untap, but you don't need to do that either. Like. There's never a real situation where you're like, I need, I, I wish I had a card to draw me a card, or I need a card to untap this energy. Um, so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to throw more extra cards. Like before this original build had like, it had Nimbuses in it um, as as more extra cards, but I ended up cutting all those extra cards because I just didn't like having that many extra cards in my deck. Yeah, personal ambition is really good to like cycle through your deck, but with with the deck already being as tight as it is, um, it, it's really hard to find space for something like that, and then. And then since you're mostly playing stuff from the from the uh, discard from revival, you you don't really like need to play stuff from hand to make the situation where you want to untap one yeah. like really key. So it, it's it's just kind of the situation where it's like it's not really needed. There's better stuff to put in. Yeah. All right. So and then we're gonna get into the MVP of the deck. Yeah, this is the this is the big reason why the deck's the deck. <laughs> yeah, so this is the main target for uh, revival of the emperor, clan of terror, uh, mecha frieza. Um, being able, like 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 Danny was saying, being able to see exactly what's in your opponent's hand, and uh, not only strip them of their key cards, but being able to play play around what they have is 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 really key at a high level, and like. For seeing hit's been the best red card for forever. It, it, it wins games by itself and closes out games really well. And the fact that you can play it for, you know, have a similar effect as early as turn two is super just yeah. backbreaking for certain matchups. It's, it's really good. And the fact that you can continuously play, you can get you know, like one to two activations a turn, just kind of makes, you know, the, the, the matchup for the opponent really hard to try to come back. Yeah, because they have to decide, if this is on board, they have to decide, do I try to kill this? And if they, uh, do I try to kill this or just go to face? And a lot of times they'll just try to kill it. And if they try to kill it, you know, I can defend if I not. But if I don't defend, it goes to the grave and just come, and then I just bring it right back. Then all of a sudden it's like, oh man, maybe I shouldn't kill this because he's just going to bring it back anyways. But then if they don't kill this, then I just have a constant 20k <laughs> double strike pressure on board, right? So now you put your, put your opponent in a position where they're like, what do I do? Like, do I alleviate the damage you're coming through? Or do I let you wish them back? You know, it's like how many wishes, you know, so there's so much thinking involved and so much um, that your opponent has to do and what you have to do that uh, dealing with these guys is, is pretty annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, part of... Go um, <clears throat> Officeary for life says, how does it do against lineage swap? Um, so against the Broly decks that I played against... So there, there's the two versions, like the, because you see like the the Broly like aggro, that's something like Justin Rios plays. Then you see the pure lineage, and then you see like something like Marcel played, where it was like a mix. Um, I, I'm gonna say against Broly decks, 
it felt, I thought it'd be hard. Even against veggies, I thought it'd be hard because I thought they could put a lot of pressure on me. But you just put so much more pressure on them. It's insane. Like, because they're they're self-harming themselves to awaken, by the turn, that turn you start, like, turn two, three, when you start going off, they've already taken, like, one, two, three, like, however much damage to themselves. And if they're already awakened on four life, and I'm spamming out these 20k freezes, uh, double strike, looking at their hand, taking out their super combo, swinging, forcing them to combo with not super combos, it gets pretty it gets pretty rough. I thought the match would be hard. I know Colby told me when he was playing it, he like 9-0'd or 11-0'd the Brawly players, whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, that seems pretty uh, unrealistic. And then I played, and I don't think I've ever lost to a Brawly. I, I think I 2-0'd every Brawly player I've seen, and um, and it's pretty good. I, I, think, I do think the height of mastery one is a bit better because at least they have a kill turn, whereas like if they get their guys off, they have a potential kill turn. Whereas the other decks, they they don't get anywhere near a kill turn. Yeah, and and the 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 dynamics of, of the freezes like really cover the board on you know how how to adapt. So like if if you're saying like like they they played the aggro version, we, we, we have ways to like clear the board as early as turn two, yeah. which is which is nuts. Um, so if they if they go balls to the walls, you just kind of defend, uh, stay alive, and then you can just destroy their board really easily and if they're like slower like like you're saying you just kind of like pick apart their hand and take their key cards mm. and it's uh it's pretty gross Actually, another thing about the broly too is because they have lust right and you think lust would be oh they, i can just lust his things he can't see my hands perfect but it's like no lust actually sometimes i feel like lust is almost a liability because it, it, it baits you to tapping your energy so it's like i play my wish they have to blind lust so when they if they do <laughs> lust you can just play your Deadly Defender, right? Because there's nothing for him to be lost anyways. You play your Deadly Defender, and then you just wish another one out anyways. But or or sometimes if you don't have your Deadly Defender, I'll, I'll just throw this out there just because it's still a 20k a swinger. But now they're tapped out because they usually only leave one yellow up for that tap out. And if once they're tapped out and I play a second one and I see the hand, you can count their cards and just and, and, and kill them because they don't have that negate energy or they have maybe they have a negate but they have to take a life now. Oh man, oh man, it's, it's pretty bonkers. All right, so... Uh, this is the last of the. Oh yeah, yeah. So, go, so if you guys have any questions about the deck for for uh, Danny at all, or myself, just go ahead and type it in the chat. Just at Kitchen Table Meta, and we'll uh, yeah. make sure to answer them for you. Because this deck is actually very hard to play, which is why I was having so much fun with it. Because it's not very, it's not simple. It's very hard, and um, and not what you have to do, but what your knowledge can make this deck do. The more knowledge you have of the current meta of your opponent's deck and how far you can push with this deck greatly changes the way a good player plays and a bad player. I'm still learning the deck and I won that tournament, right? Like, I remember I played Ryan Severn in the finals and I was making misplays. I was doing, like, oh man. I think it was, it was probably the most embarrassing game I've ever played and it was the only game that was recorded and I'm pretty sure it's going to get posted and I'm probably going to get flamed for all my misplays. I, I misplayed like crazy. Like me, I think we both misplayed, but... It was at the end of event two, and we both misplayed. We were both having like a. I, I was doing things I had never done before, and I was, it was just throwing me off. I'm like, what is going on? How am I in these situations? It was it was really bad. So, <laughs> you can definitely get yourself in that in that situation where you're just playing this deck horrible, which I, I unfortunately did. Still won though. <laughs> yeah, so to, so to round out the Frieza package, we got a. Uh... I don't remember who I I, th I, I, I want to say I think I I, I'm, I was the one who 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 first added this. But when I first thought about it, I was like, I, I've always wanted to make this a thing because he was always a joke, kind of like, and then he became like, you know, 10 cents and like, it was, <laughs> you know, it wasn't a good card. And I've always been, I've actually been trying to make him when I was playing SS3 and stuff like that, I was doing this as well. So when I saw an opportunity to play this package, I was like, oh, I need to try this even if it's shit. But oh man, oh man, it's actually not bad at all. <laughs> yeah, so, so we started out pretty deep. It was like 3-3 three, three, and then I think we shaved it to like, Two occupations and then three golden freezes, but I think I think yeah, Danny but, Danny yeah. cut it down to two two and yeah that's that's been the kind of the, the sweet spot because you ever only want to play this guy once yeah exactly so the only reason you have two is because uh, unlike these other ones where we have one ofs is because he's actually part of a combo where these aren't really combo pieces so if you ever if you life both like if you like if you only playing one and you life the one then these are all dead like these are dead cards right mm -hmm. you'll, you'll never get to play them so that's why we played two obviously to make it a little bit better uh, better chance that we uh, and sometimes you need to energy one right you energy one or you see one get bursted or something and you, and you can freely energy one you're like, oh thank god you know you can just like cause sometimes sometimes energy can be difficult yeah we, we started we started a little deeper on a lot of the freezer lines I think we had like 
two deadly defenders, two of the uh, other, yeah. uh, the, the the set one Mecha Frieza. Yeah, I think Colby's um, original list had like four. Uh, he, I think he started off with four Clan of Terrors, mm-hmm. and like yeah, two of those, two of those, like like you were saying, and yeah. Um, but yeah, once I realized, once I played the deck and I started seeing where I, I could cut, it was uh, it was pretty good. Right. Yeah, and then. Um, Death Chester says, "What would be a hard matchup or problem cards for this deck?" Um, so I think the worst card that I ran into in the tournament and in playtesting, uh, card specifically, is the five drop Gogeta. Oh my god, the guy's so annoying. Because like you look at their hand and you see that five drop Gogeta, you can't play it because it's it's five drop Gogeta. It's gonna let them draw two cards and bounce two of your guys, so you can't touch it. And then when they play it on themselves. It would be one thing if they killed if they killed them and drew two, sure, why not? But he throws them on the bottom of your deck, and once these go back into your deck, especially on the bottom, and you can't keep spamming them out, it gets pretty rough. So 5-drop Gogeta is actually, for a single card, it was the most annoying card that I've run into. Um, Deck-wise, the, the hardest deck I've, I've come across for this deck is Shenron, um, because Shenron essentially does what we kind of do, um, but it does it like... So it's like so a big thing that we do here is like we look at your hand. I play your, I, I'll play something down and then kill it, and then you know, and then slowly dwindle you like that and then punch your face and all that kind of stuff. But Shenron, if I play one of your guys and kill it, it goes to the grave and then you just wish it back. So if anything, I did you a favor there, and it's like oh man, you know. So I I've had a hard time against Shenron, especially Shenron Gogeta. Unfortunately, that's all well, I haven't like that's the only matchup I've I've found that I have haven't figured out what to do yet. But I've only played it like twice, so. Um, I, I do think Shenron's the hardest matchup for me, at least, that I've, that I've come across. Um, Justin Eric on Facebook and Table One Gaming on YouTube say, how are the Janimba Mill matchups? Uh, so, originally, it was it was pretty rough because it's, yeah. it, it's a burst leader. Um, that's, that's never a good time against Janimba, but... Uh, once, once Danny put in, you know, the Bulma packages, it helped a lot. And also, um, uh, I was playing a build that that didn't even play the Bulma's main deck, and it was just with the two star, uh, two one stars. And being able to dump their hand really early, uh, along with the Clan of Terrors, um, was super super key in that matchup because it. it, it Janimba is all about their hand size and managing, you know, their life and their hand. Um, while trying to mill you, so if if you get rid of their hand, it it takes a lot of their defensive capabilities away. So it, it made just you know keeping their hand size small was uh, really key to like you know push through damage. Which is yeah, which was, which is really crazy about this deck is that we both played against Janemba's and he 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 took a different route to beat it, and I took a different route to beat it, and. That's what's crazy is that there there's so many different things you can do with this deck, so many different paths, so many different like um, situations you get yourselves in to still find a win. You don't have to you know you don't have to do his discard way. You don't have to do my like just push push aggro away whatever. Right? The fact that uh, he found a different way to beat it and I found a different way to beat it was pretty uh, is why I really like the deck. The fact that I, I I've said this before. I've always wanted a deck that had a chance to beat every deck. I don't like having a deck where it's like, oh, I ought to lose to see this. Whereas for me when I was playing the Bulmas, if I so without the Bulmas. I felt the way I was playing, it was like an auto loss. I felt like I, I, I couldn't win without it. That's why I put in three. Now, I don't really necessarily like three, but I feel like you need to at least resolve two Bulmas. In my experience, you need to at least resolve two Bulmas mm-hmm. throughout the match so that on that final turn, we're like, man, I have like three cards left in deck. You know, it's like, oh, never mind. I have like nine cards left in deck still. Um, that's why you need, you, you need to resolve at least two throughout the game. Now, if you're only playing two, the odds of you either drawing it or it getting bursted will just, it sucks, whatever, right? So that's why I didn't want to lower it to two, so I kept it at three to give myself a chance. And then, obviously, in game four, I, I sided in the fourth one because you need to, I think, at least resolve two of them, if not three sometimes. Um, I was playing I, I was playing Dehan in, in practice, and at one point, <laughs> I, 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 I resolved three of them, and he's like, yeah, I can't beat that. You, once you, you resolve three, there's no, way I'm, there's no way I'm pushing through that. And uh, and that's how I was able to beat him. And he's like a really good Geneva player, so... That's why, like the, the those Bulmas. That's why it was hard for me because they get si- if I'm not against a Janemba, they get sided out almost every time, like, hundred <laughs> percent. So it was pretty hard for me to. Um, it's hard for me to bounce that th- those numbers. Yeah, and and since they're basically adding two to your deck, it's like uh, part of part of why resolving two is really important. It's because it 
basically makes your burst because you only have uh, you activate it two maybe three times. Yeah. Uh, so it, it negates the, the, the burst, so it kind of puts you back on a level playing field instead of, you know, playing from behind yeah. with the burst. Actually, one more thing. I think we skimmed over it's these two guys here. Is, um, I, was talking, I was actually talking to Peter about this, uh, Peter Katani, whatever, because he, 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 he was kind of fiddling with the deck as well. And, um, and Richard mentioned this as well. There's, a, there's another a Namekian that you can combo into play, and uh, it's on the board so that you can sack it for this. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well... Is this worth it? Can you play this? And I was like, I found a lot of the times, and I, I thought that too. It was like, oh, maybe I need a lot of one drops so I can sack to get this off. But I found a lot of times you actually didn't. A lot of the times I had like two or three of these on board at a time, and then they they go to three life. I just saw your hand. I saw you don't have a negate. So then I'm like, okay, whatever. I'll just wish out this guy, sack these two guys that just attacked anyways, evolve on top, wipe their board free wish this guy back out, you know, like, and then just wish these guys back out. Cause like sometimes these guys stay on board and you want to sack, like you want them to die so that you can keep wishing them. So having this to sack two of them, draw two cards, then wish them back is, is, is it's nuts to me. Like, oh my yeah, this, this deck's <laughs> insane, you guys, I'm sorry, this deck's insane. Yeah, so very last card, uh, Beyond Darkness, Demigra. Woo! I think, who added this? I think it was, this wasn't in the deck originally. Yeah, yeah, this one wasn't in the deck originally. I think we just kind of were like, we, we, we were trying to figure out what Another, was the yeah. best way to like, because the ult doesn't do anything. Yeah, we, it, we don't it, ult it, ever. Yeah, so it was like, how, how do we how do we use the, the, the Dragon Balls to like, you know, in, yeah. effectively? So it was, we, we, we would bounce between this and then the, uh, the Foo Shrouded and Mystery. Yeah. I think originally we had one one, yeah, yeah. Um, but then uh, Danny just cut it down to the Demigra. Yeah, that's all you really need. Some like I think we uh, the other one is kind of helpful in the fact that if it gets bursted against Janemba, you have the other one to kind of a backup. But then but then the one time I was playing, I just bulmed the Demigra because it did get bursted. I just bull, I just bulmed it back and then I drew into it like the next turn. I'm like, oh wait, never mind. Sweet. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, Demigra it really he helps clean up close out games. Cause that's, that was another thing I was, I was finding when I, when with Colby's original build, I was like, man, there's no real game. At, Cause he, Colby didn't have like um, the seven drop Frieza or the, de the the Demigra. So it's like, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out a way to close the game outside of just spamming these guys. Um, so then yeah, when I added these, they just added a whole new dynamic. They can't go to three without being safe. You know, this is like a, a clock for them. If I hit five and I have this, you're pretty you're probably dead anyways. Um, so yeah, he he was just a. These two are just great closers. I I, I love these I love these guys. And I love that this actually works. Like I thought this would just be clunky and bad, but it actually pays off clutch sometimes. Yeah, and 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 since you're never ulting, basically Demigra is like the the, the perfect one because you're always gonna have seven Dragon Balls yeah. in, in the discard, so it just kind of works out really really nice. Although David did try to ult me <laughs> in one of the games we were practicing because his Demigra was in his life and he knew it. So uh, and I, so I stopped attacking him and I was trying to mm -hmm. deck him out. So with his final push, he had to ult with his Dende. Making it a 25k single strike for game, but luckily I had enough 5ks in my yeah, hand. Yeah, you had all the 5ks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any other any questions, guys? We got uh, Daniel Asane uh, on Facebook says, "What was the hardest thing about playing this deck?" Uh, okay, so for, for, for during that tournament, and I was still like, I was I played the deck before against my friends. Obviously, I was practicing here and there, but um, it, it, practicing and, and playing in national tournaments are a lot different, but. The turns one and two, this is like what makes or break a good player playing this deck. Turn one and two is, it's so crucial because eventually things kind of just line up on turn three and four, what you're trying to do. But turn one and two, knowing what you need to keep or knowing what, when to use your one star Dragon Balls. Um, Cause so, so these guys, these one drops here, to me, they're almost dead turn one and two. Yeah, they're one drops, but I, I never want to play them turn one and two. These guys really get played on turn three and four when I'm either looking for a specific Frieza or I just couldn't find a wish coming up to that point. Because one and two, you obviously want to get your dry, your, your one stars off. Now, whether you one star on, on turn one or one star on two or double star on two or you know you have to save an energy for Dende on two because you you really want to awaken on turn two because the second you awaken on turn two and you start spamming out these guys the game just opens up for you mm -hmm. so being able to decide whether shoot do i need to one star on turn one or do i need to play you know Dende on turn like what turn you need to play these guys on 
or if you actually just have to play sometimes you just need to play one of these guys like a lot of times like when you when you mull your hand if i see this guy i'll keep him because i know i can just grab my one star after i burst to throw him away or sometimes actually i don't keep my super combos but um and and, so, and, and also with the dende is because because we have nine right so the biggest thing with dende is you want to be on an odd number of dragon balls when you're doing your effect so that by the time you get to seven Dragon Balls, you get the full value out of it and draw two. So now if I'm at like four Dragon Balls going into my my next turn, whatever, and I do my burst and I and it's two Dragon Balls, then Dende now I, now I have to spend an energy on Dende to get to get that last Dragon Ball. So I need to map out whether because if I if I didn't do one star or Dende on turn one, and then turn two comes along and I have six Dragon Balls, two of them are which are this then I know I can't fetch my seventh one because I can't play, 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 you know? So it's like, you, you need to kind of figure out those little nuances in, in the beginning of, of the game, which I found was really important. And it also sets the tone of which path you're going, right? Like when I, like I said, when I was playing my friend Shad, when I went to, um, most of the time you're always turn twoing this, but I'm like, I know I need to turn to this. So I saw him, I turned to this, and then it just lights out. Um, so just small things like that, knowing your opponent's deck will vastly make this deck from a good deck to a great deck knowing how to control them and and taking what cards out of their hand and and, and stuff like that uh joey paladino on facebook does it ever worry that this deck taps out a lot and has a lot of one plus 10k combos sick deck by the way thanks joey um so not really uh usually usually like like he says those first few turns are really important to like you know your success throughout the game because uh, if you do get caught with like a lot of extra cards or a lot of 10ks in your hand, you, you just you know you're you're leaving yourself exposed. But um, if you if you map it out right, you can have very minimal 10ks, and uh, the 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 fact that you basically can have a live time magic with sparking turn one as early as turn one uh, is, is is really key in it. And there isn't a lot of decks that can put that much pressure on this deck to where you're to, to where you're kind of like dead in the water like that but um, knowing what to discard to the balls especially like the the 10ks uh, like occupation and um, the the mecha Frieza uh, is, is, is really important because then it leaves you with you know the the 5ks and then the super combos to defend against those decks so um, I, I, I never really had that situation yeah. where I was like really scared. That this I had is, a lot yeah, of this, this is what I was going to back before, where it's like, let's say I'm spamming out these guys, and I'm swinging with them. Now my opponent has, and I'm at like I did this on turn two, so I'm either I'm probably at eight life still, seven life depending what leader I'm against, six life. Now at that point they have to decide: Do I go for Danny's, you know, eight, seven, six life and give him some cards, or do I try to clear this off the board? And like I was saying. A lot of people try to just clear this off the board, thus we never actually need any kind of defense. And that's why I'm... Because like a lot of times you can look at your life and you just saw your opponent's hand. So I, I'm like, I just saw his hand. I know I can safely tap out this turn. And that's why, honestly, turn one, two, three, four, I'm like trying to use all of my energy because I know I'm not going to use it on their turn unless I know like I want to combo this away on one of their attacks for whatever reason. But a lot of times you're at six life, you look at their hand and like, okay, you can't six O me, so I know I can just tap out here. Especially if you have your time magics, just just live like that. Time magic is, it's oh man, these sparking eight gates are the tits. It's actually it's really, it's actually really sweet. <laughs> um, random Lil Zay one on YouTube says at Kitchen Table Meta, how was the blue black hero matchup? Which I guess talking about. So uh, or, so uh, luckily I actually played that because um, uh, in testing I know my uh, our teammate Zoo here he wanted to that was a deck that he was gonna going to choose and we were playing against it. And the deck is actually very easy to go against, but if you ever, if the if the video ever gets out of me and Severn playing it, and you and you watch <laughs> me play, you guys do not do what I was do. Like, oh my, it was probably the most embarrassing match I've had all day. Like, I was probably two owing or doing really well against everybody, and I guess I don't know if it was fatigue or what, but some of the things I was doing, I'm like, what are you doing? Stop, you know? And like, and the only reason I won because I was like, well, I knew he was still in my deck, and I'm like, oh my god, I had like four cards left in the deck, and then I finally drew him. Like, hey, I just slammed him down and won. But, but before that, like I was doing like, I was like swinging at his 30k Demigra trying to like combo up kill it even though I knew I couldn't because I already saw his hand, you know and like and, and stupid like, I don't know it was, it just if you ever see that video please 
erase that from your mind and never watch and, and don't do what I do because this deck is definitely better than how I play it. Game three, I played it okay, I think, but um, games one and two, it was it was embarrassing. And I just if that video ever comes out, please don't judge me too hard. <laughs> but yeah, again, um, because you can wish these guys out so early that you if you just if they have the overall card in their hand. You literally can just take it out. And there's no way they can defend that 10k unless they have like three negates and they want to just dump all their negates out. Um, but you can do it by like because they have to get to what three energy before they evolve. Uh, especially if you go first and on turn two you play it and they have one energy. Okay, then not next turn two they play two energy. Next turn they play three energy and like but by then by the time they're on their third energy you've already played like four of these guys or or something or something absurd. And then especially if you get the deadly defender out first. Like if I'm going if I'm going first and I get on turn two I get him out first. And throw him down, past turn goes to their two energy. Harudagarn can't attack and draw any more cards, so they're stuck with whatever they have in their hand, which is on two energy, which they can't do anything outside of playing like a one drop. Then turn three comes back to me. I play this. I see their hand. Now I have a deadly defender and this. I attack your, your your overall guy. That's like your whole plan. You you, you lose. You know, like you're, you're not <laughs> seeing any more cards. You're not getting yeah. past this deadly defender. And I just killed your combo cards. That that would be annoying for me. And yeah, the the deck against Zuhair, it was really easy, and we both saw his. He, he Zuhair said like, "There's no way I, you win this matchup," and I, I lost the matchup to 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 Ryan because of how poorly like oh, it was just disgusting. Yeah, but it, it, it should be an auto win. To, to be uh, honestly, it should be an auto win. Yeah, part part of why the deck is so good is because a lot of the a lot of the decks in the format right now are kind of combo based. Like you you're trying to like use two or three cards in conjunction with each other. And the fact that you can bring this guy, guy out as early as turn two and pull their piece that they need and kill it and get rid of it completely like throws them off their game and it basically leaves them in situations where they need to draw into it. Yeah. And that's not a situation any <laughs> player wants to ever be in. It's like, you know, am I going to draw the card that I need? Uh, yeah. And most of the time it's going to be no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Isaiah Herring. On Facebook and the DOS 13 on Twitch, say how did this deck fare against the Vegeta Baby deck? I actually didn't see. I actually didn't see one all tournament, and that was actually one I was kind of thinking about. I'm like, that would be kind of annoying because my only real kill card is this Mecha Frieza for that guy, unless I try to combo up into it. Um, so like, I understand what I would need to do, where it's like you know you play you bait out the one drops um, to 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 kill its effects, and then you know come at it with you know like look, I can look at their hand know that they can't and then try to combo up kill the 30k guy maybe or you know play the deadly defender so they can't so it doesn't really trigger hurt him and then and then play this afterwards to kill it um but the only thing uh, if it if it hits board and then that, that that was like my one strategy if i ever saw one then the next strategy is if if you go first at least now they need to if if they have the ultimate turn where they go off on turn two and they can go like you know one drop one drop and then go off the chain all the way on turn two then you know, then sure why not that that's when it gets hard. But if they can't do that, then I think it's easy because we can just clan of tear their hand, look at whatever piece they need, and then just kill it, mm -hmm. right? So it's like if they don't get it off on turn two, and it goes to their turn three and four, and like they need to you know you know play their digging deep or play their daily Vegeta or just play two one drops, you can just play you can just kill you can kill those cards before they can actually combo up. And then once and then and then uh, and then once you do kill that baby, it's pretty much lights out too. Like. Um, if you ever do get a chance to kill it, then the, and they have to do the whole chain all over again, it's 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 not that easy to, to do the chain multiple times throughout a game. Yeah, and, and that's a matchup where like uh, the the deadly defender comes in real use because if you uh, prevent their leader from their front side from from drawing a card from attacking your leader, it, it really slows down the, the 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 tempo of their deck. And and like he said, if he doesn't if if you don't have that 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 you know chain really quickly then you know locking it locking you down and then continuously discarding cards with, with one star is going to just kind of bury them really quick yeah. uh okay uh fabio Oliveira on facebook says blah 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 why do you guys call this the kzf deck for other people have done um so it's it's funny when it comes to decks now if anybody makes a deck anywhere in the world, let's say I make a deck at home by myself, you know, some guy in Australia makes a deck, you know, who who can really say they claimed that deck if if 
neither of them have shown anybody, right? So it's like, I guaranteed when this when Colby made this deck, I'm sure there was some kid in, in Europe or wherever who, who's been playing Dende because he loves Dende character and, and he just somehow threw this together. So I'm sure there's diff a bunch of different variations of this deck out there. Um, whether you claim it to be yours or not, this specific one with all of these, you know, Bulmas, I 100% guarantee there's nobody else in the world that had the exact 50 card list as mine. So when it gets to that point, whose deck is it, right? Like, unless somebody specifically takes this carbon copy of this deck and plays it, and they're like, this is my deck, you know? And then it's like, well, no, actually, Danny played exactly 50 for 50 cards, so that's Danny's deck. Whereas, you know, like, just because somebody plays... You know, like, I play Dende with seven Dragon Balls. Oh, you have seven Dragon Balls. Our decks are exactly the same. You know, so it's like, when people try to claim decks like that, like, honestly, when I when, when this deck was made, I never tried to claim this. Why? Because Colby gave me the idea of the deck. Sure, this specific build, I'm going to say, is my deck because, you know, these one-of cards, you know, these this specific 50 cards are what I put together and I, and I, and I, and I showed the world. But this original idea, I got this from Colby, right? Colby showed me the idea, and I just I worked on it, and I tweaked it. So whether it's whether it's Colby's deck or my deck or some kid in you know Europe's deck, it's really it doesn't really matter whose deck it is, right? Like just because just because I'm the first one to win a big event with this and show it, it's and then and then people come out of the woodworks. Oh, I was playing that deck since you know since set one. And it's like well these cards weren't out since set one. You know, it's like I've been playing this for months now. And it's like well if you were playing it for months, then you know maybe and and you wanted the attention for it then maybe you should have just revealed it and then try to like spam it or, or go to big events and do well with it, right? So when people try to claim decks as their own, whether, especially if they're trying to hide the decks too, and then and then after it gets revealed, they're like, nope, I made that first! You know, it's like, it's it's annoying when people try to claim a deck for their own or whoever's, whether they did, whether, you know, whether it is true, whether they did make it first or not, um, it's, it's irrelevant. You know, the deck's there, everybody has access to all these cards. You know, I, I guarantee, I guarantee, I guarantee you, there's hundreds of people that have, you know, a Dragon Ball in their deck with Clan of Terror with this Frieza, mm -hmm. and then and then the rest of the cards are different, yeah. right? But at that point, what's the difference? Like, who who made what deck? Yeah. But specifically, this one that I took to the event, this specific list of fifty cards is my deck yeah. because I, I put this together and I took it to a tournament, and, and that's how that that's, that's yeah, how it that goes. And, and the main thing people need to understand is that KTM never <laughs> said that we were the originators of this deck. Like, obviously, like you were saying. People have made similar decks. That's fine. But this is the KTM build. This is the build that we came together as a team, yeah. worked on, tuned, and this is the one that Danny came on and played. And that's that. That's all we were, we, we were saying. Yeah. So, so I think, like, David's build, he has, like, two... Like he somehow fit in two of those, mm -hmm. like, Vegeta FRs, right? Now, are our decks the same? No, they're not the same because there's two different, right? But that's his version of the build, and this is my version of the build. So it's, like, whether... And neither of us can be like, oh, well, you stole my build. Well, it's like, well, technically we work on it together. Yeah. But, <laughs> but um, you know, so when people try to claim builds, it's, you shouldn't, you shouldn't try to claim builds. When people, like, it's like, I remember Dusty always tells me the stories where some people will, there's people out there who will, let's say a new deck, a, a, new, a new set comes out, right? And it's, I don't know, like, who, who are the new cards? Like Frieza or something, like that, that weird Frieza. And, and he, 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 he uses the Frieza. And he takes all of the new cards from the new set that are, you know, specific for <laughs> that Frieza or something like that. Oh, that's my deck. So now anybody ever in the world who either plays that Frieza with any type of cards that are similar to that. Oh, you stole my deck. You know, it's like, no, you literally just took 50 cards from this new set that, you know, are supposed to be for this deck. It makes basically a starter deck. And that's, and that's not your deck. It's just, you know, it's... It's the Frieza deck with all those cards, you know? Where like, like when somebody says, like, oh, I made that starter deck. It's like, no, those are just starter deck cards you just threw together, you know? And maybe you changed it. Maybe you added Sensu Beans or something like that. Yeah. doesn't mean it's uh, not still the starter deck. So yeah. claiming decks in this um, claiming decks in this is, is, is very strange to me when people try to take ownerships of something, even though, you know, people have different variations of it out there. Yeah. At, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. I mean, we'll, we'll be completely honest. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, if someone else wants to take ownership, yeah, sure, yeah. go ahead. But this was this was our build, and that's <laughs> all we're and that's all we're ever gonna say. On to the next one, Dusty. <laughs> uh, Donald Bookhart 3 on the Twitch says, "What's the hardest matchup for the deck?" Uh, personally, I think it's Shenron, but it's just the Shenrons that I've played. 
they were they were really hard. I played a Shenron Ribrian that I couldn't deal with, and I played a Shenron Gogeta that I couldn't deal with. I played a Shenron Boo that I shouldn't have been able to win. Actually, <laughs> actually, I won that one because I was because I because I remember Marcel slapped me with that deck like a couple times uh, on Octagon one time, and I, so I knew what he was trying to do. And I remember, I, I was actually really proud of this win because I knew exactly what I needed to do. And I needed to, and um, so I left my, it didn't, it, for me, it, it didn't matter if I was awakened or not awakened at this point. All I needed was to have an energy up. Uh, and I, I, I couldn't, because of the one stars, right? I couldn't do my t normal tap out, tap out. I needed to not awaken, leave my energy. So I couldn't one star that turn. And I had a bad ring in my, si in my sideboard. So I had bad ring in my hand and I had, and, and, and I just had time magics. So the turn that he decided to go off and do all of his, his craziness, I, you know, free time magic he bad ringed, I bad ringed, and then I won. <laughs> because, you know, because time, you know, and then like, but if I didn't know that he was trying to do that, and I, I normally would have just tapped out for both of my one stars, or, you know, or, or just tapped out turn one and two, it knew that I couldn't, um, and it's like, oh, I'm safe, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Then I, I definitely would have just got steamrolled. But the fact that I knew that I needed to, you know, time magic, bad ring, and get into a bad ring war with him, uh, I, I knew I, I, I was going to win that one. And that, that's how I beat that one. But those other ones are hard. Janemba is obviously, it's not that it's hard, but it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, typically the decks that kind of sit back, that, that want to sit back at 8-life and just kind of do their game, those are the ones that are kind of hard because... Uh, the, the, the deck gets a lot easier when you try to like self-inflict damage to yourself. Um, for 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 the Dende player, it's it's easier for them. Oh yeah, like Broly decks are yeah. cake. You guys. I, I thought Broly. <laughs> I actually thought Broly. I still think Broly's really powerful, and I thought Broly was one of the best decks in the format. But why? Oh man, Broly is so bad against this deck. It's insane. Yeah. So 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 decks that kind of just sit back and try to do their thing, like you're saying, like you know Shenron Boo, Shenron decks, Janimba. They just kind of sit back and they and they try to you know win win by by a separate route or like all in one turn Th those are the decks that are a little harder to deal with while 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 they're not completely unwinnable they're 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 the harder matches and that's why i was saying knowledge is like knowledge of the meta and knowledge of what like and all that kind of stuff like when you see your opponent like you see his leader and then you see his like first two cards you need to instantly be like oh i know what he's doing and then and then and all of a sudden in your head be like okay i need to do this 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 I need to I need to make sure he doesn't have this, you know. So your your head's got to start spinning off off his first energy, you know, or his first play, or the first time you see his hand. You need to be like, I know exactly what to do, um, to to win to win this matchup, and that's just knowledge of the game, and uh, and stuff like that. Okay, um, we have Chaos Croc on YouTube says I have worked in two copies of Pledge of the Pan. Have you guys looked at that card at all? So I thought I saw I saw some people building that too, and um, and I thought and I actually love Fletching Pan and like my other decks, but for this particular deck, I just never felt room. F like I never felt like I understand why you would want to right to just keep pitching these things and, and drawing, but one it's susceptible to like Crisis Crush or something. You know, it can it can easily die, but um, two. One star is just so good, you know. It's, like, it's either that or like one. Because if you're playing that, then maybe you don't need one star as much because you're just pitching them off this. Because you don't want to. It gets to the point where you actually don't have any more of these guys to pitch. Because you really just want to pitch your freezes right off your one stars, and it gets to the point where sometimes you don't you don't have too many of them. Um, and then it, like like I said, so if you are going to play Fetching Pan, that kind of takes up your. It almost changes the deck completely when you're trying to do your turn one and two. Like I said, turn one and two is so important. So if you're playing Fledging Pan, you 100% want to play her on turn one to get maximum value out of her. So that's so that's maybe why you know you shouldn't be playing one stars or maybe you only play one star. But again, one star is like so. Like when I was playing one, I thought it was powerful, and then when David told me to play two, it just changed. The, it just changed the whole the way the deck is played, and that's what's crazy about this deck is because there's there's so many different paths to take. Like you said, Fledging Pan could be really good in the deck. I personally just don't like it in the deck. I haven't felt like it, it's been needed. Uh, it is the yellow card to do off this whole this whole thing, which is, is pretty sweet. But it is just another target for people to try to come after, even though they can't. Um, but I think just what, it's, a, it's it's basically one star or pan, and I I, I love my one stars. Um, uh, and then again, it, it does kind of clog up your depending what you're trying to do with this 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 because you do have a bunch of one drops to play. Um, it really depends. Plus, one stars come into play later in the game, whereas pan is. If it's still there, it's still there. But the odds of it staying there for like the first three, four, like however many turns is pretty unlikely. Um, 
And then, I don't know, Ra I'm telling you guys, Radar is like, it is probably one of the best cards in the game. I didn't realize how powerful this was until I started playing it, because I didn't, I hated Shenron, so I never played Shenron decks. But having access to w one star and be like, oh, I'll get back two wishes. No, I'll get back two one stars. No, I'll get back one of each. Like, what? Is, is that allowed? Somebody said it was like something called Pot of Greed or something like that yeah. from Yu-Gi-Oh! And apparently that's a really powerful mechanic in that game. Um, so, yeah, having access to that is just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Like like you said, if, if you're running, if, if you want to run Pan, you don't run one star. But I feel like one star is such a good utility for the deck in certain matchups that like not playing it, I feel like is a is a misstep. And I've always I, I've never really liked Pan as a card in general, just because it feels kind of nag. Because like now in set five and six, we're getting a lot of like one drop cards that draw you to like Radar. Radar is a perfect example. You 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 pay one, you get two cards. And we're starting to see more and more cards like that. And so if, 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 the, if the meta is changing to a bunch of these one-drop get-two-card abilities, like playing Fledgling Pan to not draw any cards feels like really neg and like not a really good use of your resources. However, with the new set coming out, I, do, I know the guys have been talking about it. Um, that one star actually might not be as good in the deck, and maybe Pan is actually better because of I can't remember something. Um, there's uh, a block. The, the mercenary Tau. Yeah, that guy. So, yeah. yeah. So that could be a reason why now one star might get the might get the boot, and and Pan could be better. Yeah. There, there there's also um, like going forward in the set six, uh, with the idea of mercenary Tau being everywhere in someone's sixty five cards. Uh, the idea was to maybe switch one stars out for the super Dragon Balls. Because uh, being able to pay two, draw four, discard two, seems pretty good. It's like the same It's the same thing where you net two cards, but you're also fixing your hand. You get to discard your, uh, your Mecha Freezes and uh, you know other Freezes that, that you want to put in. And actually, also versus like very popular matchups too, like uh, Janemba, Pan, or like you were saying, like any decks that need to... That uh, get hurt by not having hand size. No oh, man, this just does wonders to them. You can ask Scott Dash, you guys. <laughs> I like I we played in the final round of Swiss, and I just one starred the hell out of his pan deck, and I just it was like he like he was saying like I'm not even saying this like to, to make fun of him or anything. He he was he was even saying it was like a blow like he's never lost like that before, and that's something Fledging Pan would not have done for me. Next one. Uh, okay. Zapdos melee. What up? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, Danny. <laughs> How much did did people play Haru Haru against you? How's the interaction between Haru Haru and Cloud of Terror? I think I, I saw. I won't. I think I saw people trying to play it, but honestly, you will win. By the time Haru Haru is relevant, you probably already won, you're, you're you're about to win the game. So if his play is to, um, so like you you you're, you're like I I won on turn three. Which isn't always, but you can win on turn three. But turn four or five is usually your kill turns. Now, when you're on turn four or five, and they play, and their turn is like Haru 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 Haru, Haru Haru or whatever, right? I'll be at. I'm still at that point. I'm usually still at six seven life or whatever, and it's actually not that easy, not that hard to defend against Haru Harus. And then once, let's say they do play all three of them out, or they play two, or however much they have, their hand is just like dead because their hand was already dead from what we were doing to them. Now they just threw three Haru Harus, so that's 15k combo or whatever that they don't have in their hand anymore. So then on my turn, because they're not going to kill me with three Haru Harus, so on my turn when I play my Clan of Terror and I look at your hand and it's three cards less, like you know 15k less, and I look at your hand, I'm like, and then unless you have like four negates in hand, I'm like, oh you lose, you'll lose every time. Yeah, the Har I feel like Haru Haru has been like kind of losing a lot of stock yeah. lately, like. No lie, you guys. Yeah, like like yeah. he's saying, I, I hated Haru Haru before. Yeah, like, I thought it was, was like this. Was like this does not need to exist. But like he's saying, yeah. But like now, when when every card in your hand matters, it's it's kind of gotten to the point where, I, I ideally Haru Haru you want to play on like turn three, so you get the extra energy right to untap four. By that turn, like like he said, you're gonna not have that many cards in hand, and if if all you're gonna do is play out a couple of Harus. And swing like that's yeah. not that, that's not enough pressure to deal with you know yeah. like a board of freezes yeah. and you know a handful of you know time magics and gurus. It's it's just not going to be enough. And Haru um, Haru really had its place when Cell was a thing because not only could you could lower your hand 
you can put pressure to them, lower your hand, so cell chain doesn't hurt you as much, and that's why it was really great. But against non cell chain decks, it's kind of like whatever. Yeah. The uh, and 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 the and the funny thing I think uh, what Richard Zap was getting at is like you can play Clan of Terror, and if they have a Haru in hand, you can put it in play and then force them to untap, which is which is <coughs> probably fine because it's like turn one or turn two. True. And then just swing and kill it. So it's yeah. like they don't even get the value from their horror. They, they, it comes into play. You swing at it. It dies. So it's kind of it's 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 kind of like an extra target for clan All right, Richie Harris on Facebook and many other people have asked this question throughout the stream as well. Says, how does this deck and current meta decks react to all the new cards coming to set six? Oh, that's a very big question. But how does this deck react to set six cards? You can probably take that one away. I don't, have, I, don't have, I don't have too much experience outside of what my friends have told me with set six because uh, personally, when it comes to new sets, I, I, I normally don't look at spoilers unless my friends show me. And it's and I've said this on my stream and stuff before, it's hard for me to make decks online sometimes when I don't physically have cards in my hand. Like I actually need to physically touch cards and be like and read them and, and play with them before I, before my, the wheels start turning and clicking it's hard for me to kind of like look on the computer and just like click and make decks and, and and like read cards and retain that like i have really bad memory so if i um which is really strange why i'm good with this deck because i i should really be, i should be really bad with this deck but um being able to like let's say i read through the set i'll forget every card after i've read i've read everything <laughs> so it's it's pretty bad but hopefully david <laughs> has better insight yeah so um i kind of touched on this a little bit in the last stream where uh, we had the championship room with Dehan uh, and Dusty. And I was talking about how with set six, we're starting to see a lot more like dynamic sideboarding. Um, we're, we're seeing a lot more like specific hate, like the TN that uh, affects blue and red leaders. And then we're gonna see Mercenary Tau, which affects green and yellow leaders. Uh, this deck personally will, will, will take a little bit of hit from the Mercenary Tau. You're, you're not gonna be able to reliably like one star might even become a, a, a liability if mercenary tower becomes super meta because you won't be able to activate it uh efficiently if they have one in play which which tower comes out turn one uh against your yellow leader that sounds you know bad. yeah as soon as you know, turn one tau go and then you're just like well i can't activate my one stars this sucks <laughs> I've never so, really so uh you know it, it it might have to adapt to that um uh, other decks, just just the same. Like we're gonna see more of these specific hate cards, and people are gonna start having to think outside of the box, have to play with them and against them, and it and it's really like, it, I feel like it's starting to become like a real meta because yeah. when you have to like account for the counter that your opponent could possibly be playing, so you have the counter to their counter, it really becomes like like a mind game, and and it really like kind of sets up players to like you know know the meta and predict the meta and that's gonna help their performance not just hey i brought the best deck for the format and i'm a really good player and that's gonna carry me it's like you're gonna have to play around these things now which is kind of an extra depth and is there anything that gets rid of that tile like what 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 are his stats is like a uh i think he's a 5k okay so you, so or you, you can could, M2 him or something? Yeah, you can M2. You could, uh, we were, um, me and Dusty were talking about uh, possibly, like, adapting, like, a little bit of a green build. Um, you were playing sideboard the surprise attack, Frieza, oh, yeah. which you said came in all the time. Yeah, I sided, really in, I sided in that green Frieza all the time. Yeah, um, we, were, we were even thinking about sense. putting that in the main. So uh, we were thinking about playing, like, a small green package. Uh, so... In the next set, there's a four-drop Frieza that's green. Uh, when he comes into play, you get to destroy a something, uh, with, barrier, was it? something with barrier, right? Right, Dusty? Yeah, it's a BR Frieza. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's a oh, it's a BR. It's a Frieza? BR Frieza. Okay. Oh no. Well, but we we have the green, um, and uh, well. Never mind. <laughs> it's like, no, nope, that's that completely shut, that, shut, that, shut that, that idea down. Yeah. But uh, the, 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 there's going to be... Does Tau cost one? Yeah. Uh, no, he costs three, I think, but you, he costs less if you're playing against a green or yellow leader. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Which is... like So what he was just saying before about our meta and stuff like that, isn't it crazy... Well, the new set's about to come, so obviously things are going to shaken up, that this deck, even though people have been making... Uh, apparently people have been playing this for, for years now or something, but... This deck has come to light 
near the end of this meta, basically, as the meta is about to shift. You know, so if people were playing this deck before, you know, like one, where was it? But this 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 happened to me before with um, the U7 Gohan, if you guys remember, is when uh, I first made that deck and I, I won one of my tournaments with it and then I posted it, it got so much response. Like people were like, oh my God, I love U7 Gohan. I just never built it, whatever. And then they, they played it and everyone's, they, a lot of people were like tagging me like, oh, I won my tournament with, with this U7 Gohan deck. This is amazing. But when I, when I posted that deck, you know, my, my friend Luca is the one who, who, who showed me the deck and he told me to tweak it for him. Uh, but when I posted, like, when that deck came out, that was near the end of that set as well, like, end of that meta. And that meta was, like, Ginyu Veggies and all that kind of stuff. And I was just smashing them all left, right, and center. And um, so the fact that this deck has come out now, come to light, near the end of this meta, it just shows, like, how crazy... I'm sure there's probably things that aren't even explored yet or people have been keeping a secret still and not revealing for some reason. Um that we had like you know you see in the facebook groups where people talk oh, oh man it's, it's only you know shenron gogeta it's only janemba it's only broly and then all of a sudden you know baby comes out of nowhere and starts destroying the like, starts doing really well uh harudagarn like the the blue black deck comes out of nowhere and, and does really well and all and then all of a sudden this dende deck i'm, I'm telling you guys this, this deck is legit this dende deck comes out so i was like i wonder how many more things aren't being explored right now and like I, I, I see. I read a lot of the posts where people complain about our meta, like, oh, this game sucks, it's all combos, it's all this, it's all that. But then a deck like this comes out, and I'm like, man, if people been, if people have been playing this for quite some time, which they haven't, but um, where was it, you know? And, like, you know, where are the innovators? So it's like, if you ever get yourself in a situation where you're feeling down about our game and think that you can't, you know, it's like, oh, I don't want to play these, you know, I don't want to play Storm, I don't want to play this, I don't want to play that. There is still so many i guarantee there's at least another deck or two that no one has played that maybe somebody's you know playing on their stream and hasn't revealed or something like that that's probably theirs that they haven't um you know shown to the world that's still out there you know so if you ever think that this game is stale this deck just proves that you can still be innovative in this in whatever meta you're in right this is the end of this is the tail end of the meta that gohan was the tail end of that meta um, even like with my S the SS3 deck that I played in San Jose, if, if you guys remember that one, that was a mech, that was a mecha freezer. That should have been a mecha freezer meta, but and then after that, it, everything it, it got banned and stuff like that, right? But I guarantee, maybe not so much then because mecha was really powerful then. But I guarantee there was still room to grow, right? Like my like, like, like SS3 deck that I played wasn't a hard counter to it, but it was something that you could play, and I obviously did really well with it. So this game, like you literally, you, there's so many different decks out there, you guys. So if you ever feel stale about a game, just keep trying to innovate or, or, or don't be so down on the game because I'm telling you guys, there are some great deck builders out there like Colby that are just sitting in, the, in, in, his, in, in his corner just making sick decks, you know, <laughs> and, and he just needs somebody like, and he needs to show, because he, you know, he doesn't go to a crazy amount of events or he's not as, um, you know, out, out there as I am. So it's like, he shows me that deck and then all of a sudden, bam, you know, and trust me, I, I asked him before, I, I was like, can I, can I play this deck at this Montreal? You know, obviously he's <laughs> fine with it, right? Because I don't want to, if it is a spicy deck that he wants to keep secret, obviously I'll, I'm going to keep it secret. But um, uh, yeah, I asked, I asked him, I'm like, man, this deck is the tits. Can I, can I play this? You know, and he's like, yeah, man. And I was like, I even said, can I play this on stream? And he's like, yeah, man, just go for it, you know? And, uh, but yeah, there's, there's crazy deck builders out there. And if you're one of them, just keep innovating and, uh, and, so, I'm so, it sucks. Maybe sometimes you know, you won't get the the spotlight or the attention, but just know that you're helping the game by by innovating these type of decks, even if you don't get the credit for it. Yeah, I, I when it, when it comes to like big events, I'll usually like put my head down and try to like really focus on like the meta decks. But every once in a while, I'll just pick up a random deck that I think will be fun and just try to work on it. And like that was kind of like the scenario that I was in because I just came out of Vegas and I played a, a like like three or four weeks of just blue red Harudagarn and I did really well with it and it's like okay I'm gonna put that deck away I want to play something new something fresh you know mix it up have some fun in my locals and Colby posts post this deck list uh, well not not this deck list but he posts his his original list of, of the deck and I was like dude this deck looks sweet Danny was like super getting into it too and he was like dude I just I just like won my locals with it and I was like okay so I'm gonna take it to my locals and you know I, I just want to have fun and I don't want to you know just play something you know regular meta and you know I, I took it and I played it and I was like whoa this is this is awesome like this this could be a thing and then we started tweaking it and, th and that that's just like kind of like the gears I went through and it's like if you ever get like tired of like you're saying you get tired of the meta just just try to play something fun try to try to innovate try to 
you know, get get outside of your box because 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 who knows what happens if you've never played against this deck yeah. and you know you 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 never you never played with the cards and you play against somebody who's playing it you don't know how to go up against the matchup yeah. you're not you're not even gonna know like like I feel like that's part of like the 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 power of this deck is that a lot of people don't know how to play against it yeah. and. You know, may, maybe if you know you went outside of the meta and played these these cards that weren't so meta or you know aren't uh, considered as strong as as the meta right now, you know, you, you, you might be able to find something and then it might help you in the future. Because like now, you know, I've I've played this deck. He's, he's played this deck. If we go up against something, if we make a new deck and we go up something similar to this, like we kind of know their lines of attack. So that's actually crazy. Uh, Colby actually made a version of this deck. Back at, I, I want to say Nats. Obviously, Dende wasn't out yeah. there, but <laughs> it was, um, he was using the Sorbet leader. And I actually got that question. I had I actually had that question a lot from um, people who were asking me. And they were like, oh, why are you using him? Why don't you use Sorbet? Isn't it meant for Sorbet? Because uh, of whatever. Because I guess he's, I guess the, this whole thing was kind of meant when he came up for Sorbet, I guess. Yeah. Um, so why don't you use that? And I obviously explained, you know, like it's, he's, he's a little too slow, um, awakening wise. And that was a problem that he, that Colby ran into in the beginning when he first made this deck. Uh, and, and especially because Storm was a more of a thing back then too, and like there was more aggression, I guess, in that meta. So him not being able to awaken, but he was like, "Man, this is this is insanely powerful." But you know, obviously, again, some decks you just you just couldn't awaken fast enough, and you just get you just get beat up. Um, but then, so then now, so then when Dende came out, he came back to this whole idea and realized, "Oh wow, you can actually awaken really, you know, this burst, you know, finding two Dragon Balls. It actually makes it a lot better." So. He, Colby actually had this original, whether you call it this deck or this idea, but he had this like back at Nats, and uh, I, 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 when he came back to us with it, and, and he's like, oh yeah, check out this one. I, I remember being like, oh yeah, didn't you? It's like, didn't you play some of this before? Yeah. But I was like, <laughs> but it was bad. But you know, but then he's like, no, this one's so much better. He's like, I just like nine owed brawlies, and I was like, holy shit! And the, the second he said that, I'm like, all right, I'm making it, <laughs> and, uh, and I put it together, and yeah, and it's it's obviously very powerful. Yeah. Next one. Oh, oh. wrapping it up now. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. So yeah. So actually, I don't know if you guys actually know. We're actually at uh, in Miami right now at the Pro Play Games. Uh, George has been nice enough to host us here and uh, make us feel at home. So we've just been here just chilling, you know, playing games. Obviously, just sitting in this in their recording room, recording this and and doing all kind of stuff. So uh, huge shout out to to PPG and George for like helping us out with all this kind of stuff. Um, but they do have their locals today. I think like Dusty said it was at six o'clock. They have their locals. Um, we're also, but we're also, gonna, we're doing a. I think, are we doing the King of the Hill or is it the? Yeah, we'll, do, we'll just be playing a Yeah, we're basically we're gonna be able to playing all day. Yeah. So it's six o'clock. Uh, it's either the local start, but we're gonna be having a stream match all day. Marcel's here. I, I saw him. Uh, Peter's here. So maybe I get to play against. I haven't. He's like the only PPG member I have never played against. <laughs> so I kind of want to play against him. Uh, but Peter Cotani's here. Marcel's here. David's here. I'm here. Uh, and then obviously there are other there are other local players, so it'll be good times tonight. We're gonna be streaming basically the whole thing, 6 p.m. I think we're probably gonna get something to eat right now, anyways. <coughs> but like 6 p.m. <coughs> onwards, we're gonna be just battling it out, and uh, we're gonna show them why me and David are better than PPG. Oh yeah! Come to their house and let's take them down, <laughs> boys. All right, guys, thank you so much for uh, joining us for the KTM's build of the Dende deck. Uh, thank you. We appreciate everything that you guys do for us. Um, huge shout out to... Boom! Ultimate Guard. Yeah, they, uh, they, they set us up quite nice. Yeah, greatest greatest sponsors we could ask for. Um, they're always helping us by giving us awesome products like their new katana sleeves and the Ammonite backpack. Uh, we're, we're all here with ours. Oh yeah, and, we got uh, those sick backpacks, yeah. they're yeah, amazing! Yeah, we're, 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 we're the backpack bros. So, if you come see us, come say hi at the uh, celebration event in Orlando. Lastly, guys, though, um, if you like this kind of content, you want to see more of this kind of stuff, you know, hit that like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, all three of us have Twitch. We have YouTube channels. Uh, you know, hit that. It, coming up after these celebration events or kind of maybe during, uh, I know KTM, you know, I've been talking a lot to Dusty. We've been talking a lot to David. We... We really want to pump out more content for you guys, high quality content, you know, uh, kind of putting all of our heads together, even in, some, in somewhat in conjunction with PBG as well, you know, just trying to produce more content for the community. Because um, our, goal, our goal this year as KTM, 
Uh, we're not we're not about being like the best team. If it, even if it's true or not, I, I don't think we could care less. It's uh, we really want to bring high quality, just good content to this community. Help grow the community. Help grow all the content creators. Uh, I know we, we I think we, I know we have some announcements coming up with some of our new members. Um, and uh, and I kind of like what we're doing with other people and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that, you guys, because KTM, you guys, we have a lot coming in store. We're here for the community. We want to help this game grow. And if you guys need anything, you guys know Dusty's always available. I'm always available. David's always available. You can always message us just to shoot the shit. Sorry. And, um, yeah. and yeah, you guys, coming yeah. up, we're going to be doing some pretty sweet stuff for you guys. And lastly, we want to thank yeah. PPG again for being awesome hosts. Uh, the Pro Play Tour coming up. We got Dallas coming up next, right? April 20th. April 20th. And obviously this weekend, celebration. This weekend's going to be insane. Orlando is I've been hearing be rumors, amazing. but I'm not sure if they're true. But people are like, oh, man, there's like a 1,000 people at this one. And if that's true, oh, my God. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be so fun. Stay tuned. You know, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing my my post th- like during the event too. Sorry, I know we keep rambling. We keep saying, oh, last one, last one. We keep talking, but um, you have me, David, and Russell. We're we're gonna be representing KTM in the team event tomorrow. So stay tuned. I'll probably be posting our, our progress throughout the day. Uh, it's gonna be. I'm telling you guys, I I've seen the work that Dusty and them have been putting on for the stream stuff, the kind of stuff that they're trying to set up for this event. It's gonna be bonkers. Probably the best one of of, of all of March. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie. It's gonna be freaking amazing. If you're not here, I'm sorry, but if you are, if you are coming, like I said, like like he said, come say hi to us and let's have some fun, boys. All right. Anything else you want to say, Dusty? Uh, no, I think so. All right. Thank you guys so much. Oh, it was awesome. Best night, <laughs> Thanks, thanks, Colby. You're the man. Colby's the best deck builder ever! Woo!